Bye. Hello, everybody. Um, in this uh, particular video, we are planning to explain our recent results on the personalized granuloplasty treatment. My name is Bikramjit Basu. I am currently professor at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, India. And with me today, uh, Dr. Manish Baldia is present. Hello. I am Dr. Manish Baldia, and I am a neurosurgeon, and I am working in Vokad Hospital, Mumbai. Uh, I have been uh, doing this cranioplasty for the past 12 years, and uh, we have been working on various research projects on this cranioplasty, along with uh, Professor Bikram Chit Basu. And we have come with our innovative uh, uh, cranioplasty, which is very personalized to the patient. And uh, we would like to show our results in this uh, uh, video. So cranioplasty is an, uh, more of like a cosmetic treatment for the patient. But uh, apart from the cosmosis, it also provides various uh, functional improvement to the patient. And this cranioplasty is indicated when uh, a bone flap is removed from the patient during an uh, accident or if the patient is having raised ICP like uh, intracerebral hemorrhage or uh, uh, brain edema. In those cases, to reduce the intracranial pressure, this uh, bone flap is removed. And after that, this bone flap is usually stored in either uh, cold storage or it has been kept in the patient abdomen or thigh. So it can be preserved up to six weeks, but beyond six weeks, it is not recommended to use the same bone flap and replace. So in those cases, which patient where uh, the bone flap uh, is more than six weeks old, it is recommended that you use an artificial bone. So that's where uh, artificial uh, cranioplasty is indicated. Uh, and when we uh, talk about the various implants in cranioplasty, the best implant is, yes, the patient own bone, the autologous bone is the best implant, but uh, when it is not available, it is best always to use an artificial uh, uh, material, and it can be either a metal implant or it can be either various material implant, like a polymethyl methacrylate, or it can be peak, and various people have also used uh, ceramics. So we have worked a lot on uh, polymethyl methacrylate cranioplasty, and uh, we have done patient-specific cranioplasties with the help of this material. So uh, we would like to show our uh, uh, methodology next. Uh, we This is our team. So essentially, uh, our team has been working with um, three different hospitals. Um, the first pilot clinical studies we have conducted at Ramai Hospital in Bangalore on 10 patients. Subsequently, we have validated our first clinical study outcomes in another hospital that is located in the central part of India that's near Maharashtra, that's called Dattamek Institute of Medical Sciences. So as you see in this slide that the number of young researchers as well as neurosurgeons uh, have been, have worked and subsequently we have summarized all our results in an authoritative review paper which is written with Dr. Monish Baldia who is a leading ortho neurosurgeon in India and Japria is also a young researcher who worked in this particular review paper. As I said that it was a uh, multi-centric clinical studies. Dr. Baldia has done several clinical studies in Christian Medical College in Belor and we have taken uh, ethical committee approval, both from Indian of Science as well as uh, uh, hospitals or clinical study centers. And we have followed the specific inclusion and exclusion criteria before or uh, while recruiting the patients. And subsequently, we have done clinical study outcome analysis. So from the engineering standpoint, when you get the um, CT scan image, the 3D CT scan image, then essentially we analyze front view, back view, lateral view, and superior view in order to delineate or in order to identify <clears throat> precisely the morphology of the defect. Subsequently, we have done 3D printing of the cranial mold, uh, and then we found, and then we have casted the polymethyl methacrylate on the specific defect so that polymethyl methacrylate with bone flap gets the precisely the bone defect morphology. 
as i said before that we have conducted 20 page on 20 patients you can see some of the pre operative and post operative view of the patients which are treated in, over last 3 years of these pilot clinical studies in two hospitals and these patients include not only geriatric patients but also young females of age somewhere between uh, 25 to 35 so uh, this is the uh, intraoperative picture where we are showing uh, the fixation of the clinoplasty material. Um, and uh, you can see this uh, flap material with multiple holes. We have put multiple holes so that the serous fluid uh, doesn't get trapped and it gets drained out into the drain system which we have fixed. Uh, so this uh, plate is fixed to the uh, bone, skull bone, with the help of um, mini titanium plates and uh, mini screws. And uh, we also try to hitch the underneath the dura to this uh, cranial uh, plate so that uh, there is no fluid collection in between the this bo this uh, artificial plate and the dura. So uh, we have analyzed our uh, uh, ten patients' uh, results and uh, we have checked uh, the various defect size and their GCS score and we have also done the post-operative assessment. Uh, the cosmetic assessment and also the functional improvement in these patients. So essentially what you can see that in most of the cases when you make this uh, quantitative analysis of the cranial index of symmetry, we get close to 95% or more than 95% which is clinically acceptable. And maximum defect area we could treat up to 173, up to 175 centimeters square in these particular uh, treatment protocols. So this is the key summary of what we have uh, done so far. So essentially, um, this particular protocol allowed us to do patient-specific uh, <clears throat> bone flap design, fabrication, and subsequently, uh, clinical outcome studies essentially indicate that how uh, good Glasgow outcome score, cranial index of symmetry, and Glasgow coma score has been achieved which is which has been clinically acceptable, and <clears throat> uh, one of the important outcome that we have also we have found out that in younger patients or patients with a larger time difference between decompensate craniotomy and craniopathy surgery, we have to consider the physiological bone remodeling during this particular period, and therefore we had to do uh, more uh, cranial bone remodeling analysis, and that we have done in using that interactive cloud point analysis, ICP. We have been working in this field for last few years. And in most often, what we used to do we used to meet the neurosurgeons either in the weekends or in a conclave that we have organized in Bangalore. This is one of such uh, conclave that where we have made brainstormed a number of uh, in a team with number of neurosurgeons as well as one 3D printer um, and printing manufacturer. So Dr. Magistra Medical Sciences, they have also created a cranioplasty app, what we called ODK, ODK Collect app, so which allows us to record the patient data as well as a clinical outcome analysis. Our long-term uh, objective would be to use such data and also to use artificial machine learning analysis for more predictive design as well as predictive clinical outcome analysis of this cranioplasty surgery. So one such example is that we, if we can adopt that statistical shape modeling approach and that would for the statistical shape modeling approach and subsequently allow gener implement generative adaptive uh, <clears throat> network analysis, GAN analysis. So that will allow us to predict a complete skull with full cranium symmetry, as well as an implant image with defective skull slice and data augmentation. So this will certainly accelerate the what we call uh, the implementation of the digital twin. And what you can see here, this ODK Connect app, when it is connected to the cloud server, that will allow us to not only for data collection, but also data analysis. And then defective skulls, design parameters, and patient data that will be used as an input to the artificial intelligence model, which will allow us to design as well as develop this patient-specific implant for cranioplasty surgery in a time-critical surgical operations 
yeah, or in or or in case of the trauma surgery. So what we believe that our the, when this artificial machine learning will be adopted, that will lead us to develop four generation cranial implant over last a few decades these cranioplasty um, the, <clears throat> these cranial flaps have seen significant progress from first generation cranial implant as dr baldia said that autologous bone then second generation cranial implant that is manually molded bone flap which is typically done on the operation theater during the surgery by the by the by the neurosurgeons then third generation patient cranial implant is a patient specific synthetic implants what you have seen over last 10 minutes or so and then this will lead to, when artificial machine learning will be implemented that will lead to fourth generation cranial implant so this is the paper that we have published in acta biometria and that was a review article which is written by uh, japria dr baldia and myself and I'd like to acknowledge the different government sponsors and private sponsors uh, for conducting this research. And thank you very much. Thank you.